Hey y'all, thanks for coming back to check out another episode of Movie and a Beer. I'm your host, Colin Key, as always. It's good to see you back. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Movie and a Beer. Today's beer that I'm going to be um, trying for the first time, like I said, is another one from Fathead's Brewery. Fathead's Brewery. Brewery? Brewery. And it is called Pimp my sleigh and it says it's a belgian style christmas ale it is 10.5 percent alcohol per volume fathead's brewery is in middlesburg middleburg heights ohio and the website is www.fatheads.com here's what the bottle looks like it looks like all the rest of the bottles basically they have that same dude on there Except this time he's uh, he's got a purple Santa outfit on, and there's a sleigh, and it's got like no, it's not snow, it's bubbles. It's purple. Uh, I think it looks very cool. All their bottles look very cool. Um, Fathead's is an award-winning brewery, got multiple awards for multiple beers. Let's see what it says on here. On the river and through the wood to this rich, complex Belgian-style holiday brew. Complex aromas and essence of sweet dark malt, raisins, figs, anise, anise, raisins, figs, anise, dark candy sugar, and spicy phenols. This beer will this beer will sting the toes and bite the nose, but no worries, the horse knows the way. Chill out, man. Have a beer. All right, the usual poetry. Um, this stuff looks like it's going to be dark, even through the dark bottle, I can tell it's going to be dark. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. Alright, so anyway, where was I? Okay, so yeah, the movie is called <coughs> Wind River, and it's uh, directed by a guy named Timothy Sheridan. Timothy? Taylor Sheridan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Timothy Taylor. There's the uh, classic Fathead's bottle cap. Gonna go with the collection. You see that? It's anyway, this doesn't smell bad. I don't. I'm not getting a whole bunch of. Okay, there it is. Wait a minute. What is that? I can't. So, I'm not usually a fan of the smell of an ale. In India, pale ale, yes. A, a Bayesian, Bayesian, a Bayesian ale, <laughs> a Belgian ale, or any other like regular ass ales. I don't like the smell, but this smells all right. I, uh, but this smells all right. I don't know what I'm getting here. It's like a, um, Definitely a sweetness, and it's a nice sweetness, like a chocolate-covered cherry, maybe or something. Not chocolate, though, like a like the cherry part of a chocolate, like a maraschino cherry, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, the movie Wind River. Okay, so it's directed by Taylor Sheridan. Taylor Taylor Sheridan, some dude who what did he do? Okay, he uh, he directed Sicario, which I did not care for really. I mean. It, it's a good movie, but it's just so hard. It's, it's, it's too, it's way too brutally serious. There's like not a smile involved in that movie at all. Um, and he also did Hell or High Water, which he, I believe he got an Oscar for, for, direct, for directorial debut or something. I don't know, or maybe best, whatever. I did not like Hell or High Water at all. And I know everybody else in the world did. Um, I'm not going to talk about that though. I got a lot of reasons why I didn't like that movie. Um, and he also did, he had, I guess he acted in Sons of Anarchy. This is my first time hearing of the guy. But um, yeah, I guess he's been around for a while. This class is not that clean. Damn it. I cannot stand for that. Much better. So anyway, Wind River. Oh, it stars uh, Jeremy Renner and the beautifully beautiful Elizabeth Olsen, who, for the record, 
is definitely the best looking of the Olsen triplets. Well, not triplets, but the Olsen sisters. I believe she's the youngest. I, no, I think there's another one. Isn't there four of them? I don't know. But uh, she's definitely the best looking one. That woman looks really good naked. If you don't believe me, watch uh, Old Boy, the remake of Old Boy. She's in it. She's very naked. And uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty damn good looking. Here's what I want to say about that movie. I rented it on Blu-ray DVD. Yeah, this is definitely dark, like I thought. Um, I'm gonna see. Okay, now I smell it. It smells good. It smells complicated and delicious already. So, where was I? Oh, the movie. I watched it, I started watching it. I watched maybe a two-thirds of it or a third or half who knows i watched an amount of it like a, a length of it <laughs> and then i like, got bored and tired and went to sleep the next day i woke up and i said oh okay i gotta watch the rest of this movie i, I just wasn't enthused about watching it at all but i did and when i sat down the second time that's when it held me i was like oh okay I like it sucked me in um it didn't suck me in. It held my attention. But. Not in a good way. And. Here's the thing. I was fully ready to. Shit on that movie. I was really. I was ready to give it a bad review. And then. Once it was done. That's when I remembered something that I had saw earlier in the movie and I was like, oh, shit. And it changed my whole perspective on the thing. And so I can't give it a bad review. And I don't want to. And here's why, I'll get to that in a second. Let me take a sip of this. So, Belgian style Christmas ale, 10.5%. Oh, that smells good. It's, what is that? It's like, it's almost grape. That's it's like like grape soda almost, which doesn't sound like it would be a good thing with a beer, but it's like so faint. This smells really good. No carbonation to speak of. I mean, barely. A little, t a couple bubbles. I'm not. It's not even worth showing. Uh, you can see the color though. Pretty dark, almost wineish. Almost like a um, a wine. Yeah. No head. Lacing, eh, whatever. Um, let me get a sip. sit on my palate for a second here. This is a very complicated flavor profile on this beer. There is so much happening in my mouth right now. <laughs> it is a friggin' conference. That's the wrong word. It's a celebration. This tastes super high quality, so strong. Okay, now I'm starting to get the friggin' alcohol. And I'm getting it now, but it's not overwhelming. It's there, it's like, ooh, okay. You gotta know that this is not a joke. And it's letting me know right now. At the end, it's like, okay, here, have a little bit of this flavor, and this flavor, and this flavor, and this flavor. Here, have some of that. Now, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's coming with a punch, baby. This is like when you have people over <laughs> for Christmas. When we have our little Christmas get together for family, uh, what, next week was today? Whatever. In a week or two, I'll bring probably the other three bottles that I have of this and we can share them. It's very strong. It's, it's very strong, but it's very good. Anyway, Wind River. Here's the thing. So yes, that's that's fantastic, actually. 
this right here would make me, like if I drank all four of those, not at once, if I drank one today and then one tomorrow and then next weekend drank the other two, this will have me looking for this kind of beer, like Belgian. It'll, it'll slowly but surely have me looking to buy some of this type of, this style of beer. It's definitely, damn it, Fatheads kills it. They, they It's just such a quality brand. Anyway, Wind River. The thing about Wind River is that it's a true story. At the beginning of the movie, it says based on true events or something like that. And I saw that and then I forgot that. I totally, it just left my mind. And then I'm watching it and I'm just taking it apart. I'm like taking notes like, uh, nope, 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 that sucked, nope. And then at the end, I'm like, okay, I'm going in. I'm gonna hammer the shit out of this. Who's this director? And then it was like, boo, something went off my head. Like, oh, wait a minute, what did I say? Oh, it's based on a true story, ugh. Which shouldn't, which normally wouldn't matter. But the thing about it is, when you're reminded of what they were trying to do here in this movie, you can't shit on it because it's a, it's a big deal. So, <clears throat> I'm not gonna shit on it. But here's what, but I am gonna give my thoughts. This is really good. What kind of flavors are going on here? Holy moly. <laughs> Definitely like a like a syrup, like a uh, like a maple maybe, and like a like a slight cinnamon and like a like a tiny little grape, little tiny little bit of cherry, and that this is really good. This is really good, and that alcohol uppercut at the end of every uh, swallow just like holds the flavors with you right there. That's, this is fantastic. This is really, really good. <clears throat> what did I pay for this four pack? Fatheads always comes with four packs. I think I paid 15 bucks or something. And the funny thing is when I went and bought this, what? either yesterday or the day before, I'm reaching over <laughs> to grab my four pack off the shelf and I hear, pimp my sleigh. And I was like, who the hell? And it was the dude who worked there in the grocery store. And I'm like, oh, you like this? He said, I haven't had it yet, but I love fat heads. And I was like, yeah, me too. He's like, oh. And I said, are you the one who orders this? He's like, you're damn right. He did all the ordering of the beer in the grocery store. And we ended up having a long ass conversation about beer and fatheads beer and all kind of different Christmas beers and beers and I might have made a friend. <laughs> fatheads pimp my sleigh. It brings people together. <laughs> anyway, yeah, and I'm getting a buzz already off this. It is, I think I would put this above 10.5 on the alcohol. I think it might've been 10.5 like on one of the batches that they tested or like when it was initially brewed or whatever and it's gone up since. I'm gonna definitely say that this is easily over 11% alcohol. But the alcohol punch is not a bite. It's not a, it's not a, it's just a, it's a sexy uppercut. Just, oh, yeah, it, just, to, just to let you know. <laughs> You see how fast this is going away. This is really, really delicious. Anyway, dang, this is, okay. Of the winter beers that I purchased and taste tested so far, this is by far my favorite one. A distant second is the uh, Flying Dogs Winter Warmer. What the hell, oh. Yeah, Flying Dogs Winter Warmer, I enjoyed that. I would absolutely buy a six pack of that and drink it anytime. This is way better than that. I like this. Mm. It's so smooth. Wow. I need I need a friend here to verify this with me. Anyway, so Wind River is a true story. 
what it's about is Native Americans who live in a really cold, really remote, really shitty part of the country, and they've been basically forced there. I think it's a reservation or something, and that's like what they were given, but it's actually what they were forced into through whatever. There's a whole bunch of circumstance that they kind of touch on in the movie that uh, led to this this uh, settling of people to live there, and it sucks to live there, and it's depressing to live there, and it's hard to live there, and on top of that, the, 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 the fact that they live there, and that that place is like little noticed by the rest of the country and the rest of the world things happen there and bad things on top of that and they go unnoticed so what I'm getting at is women Native American women disappear in this place all the time and it goes basically unreported uncared about unnoticed and that's what this movie is about Jeremy Renner is basically a hunter for the wildlife preserve service or something like who so like if a lion is creeping up yes lions like mountain lions if mountain lions are creeping up and killing this guy's ghosts or whatever they call him he goes in and shoots the lions so that you know it doesn't mess with everybody's uh, livestock or whatever he was married to an Indian woman or a Native American woman they had a daughter, their daughter died. That changed him and made him like cold and hard. His his dead, his daughter that died was best friends, I believe, with this other guy's, a Native American dude, Indian dude, whatever. His daughter. This movie revolves around the Native American guy's daughter being found raped and murdered and frozen to death on the side of an icy, cold, snowy mountain. So that's what the movie's about. Finding out who killed her and why, and and, and it's a brutal story. Uh, very brutal. Graphic. They show what happened, kind of, you know, not totally crazily uh, graphic, but they do show, there's like a rape scene and stuff like that. And it's kind of difficult to watch. It's very uncomfortable, but based on true events, like I said. Elizabeth Olsen plays an, I believe, FBI agent. She gets called in to investigate the murder, and basically the movie shows the difficulties that she has as an FBI agent with her with her job, like the politics that go on with her job in trying to investigate, and like what she has to have happen in order to get like the resources she needs to actually solve the murder and stuff. It's very, it's, it, there's a lot going on and it's a very serious movie. It's a very deep and serious and uncomfortable movie. And that, that's all I have to say. The, the story is, the movie is worth seeing because it is an important topic. It's true, real life. Not the movie itself, but the circumstances that are going on in the movie are true and real and happening, and it needs to be talked about. And that is why they made this movie, I believe. Now, having said that, I am definitely going to have another one of these beers. I'm going to crank on this. I'm going to destroy this. Before this review is over, this is going to be gone, and then I'm going to definitely destroy another one, and then I'm going to sleep real good tonight. <laughs> the thing about that movie, it's just not very well done, okay? So, I, uh, I mean, basically, this movie tries to paint the picture of the life that you have to live if you live in that place, like what it does to you mentally and, and physically, whatever. It's just a hard place to live in. The movie tries to depict that, make you feel that, and it kind of does. And it also tries to tell the story of the 
people who were forced to live there and why they were forced to live there, and it kind of does. And it also tries to tell the story of these women who go missing and how it goes largely unreported, and it kind of does. So it kind of checks off all the boxes. The problem with the movie, and I'm, I'm going to go very lightly here. I'm going to just basically, I'm, I'm going to tread lightly. <clears throat> I'm just going to touch on it. The movie, the whole time as I was watching it, felt amateur. It felt like it needed and deserved a more seasoned director, number one. A more cohesive vision of the actual movie, number two, and a better writing staff. I'm not a filmmaker. I don't know how hard or easy it is to make films. I'm just saying. My impression was, ah, that could have been better. Oh, oh, what, what are these? What are they doing right there? Like I just, I was critiquing the shit out of it the whole time. Having said that. The movie is not bad at all. It's just like it, it, it hits some of the things that it's trying to do and it misses completely on others. Um, some of the things that I did like about it were Elizabeth Olsen. <laughs> She's beautiful to me. But no, her as an FBI agent, um, her gun training was pretty friggin' excellent. I believe that she gave a, an awesome portrayal of the training that an FBI agent or a cop or whoever would go through, like how they would respond to a, a, a quick um, scenario where they have to use their firearm and exactly what they do. Like I could see she went through training and they showed, she did very well with her firearms scenes is what I'll say. Another thing, Jeremy Renner, He's the, this kind of part was made for him. He's just, he's that dude. He's like that. Underspoken, kind of loner type. Like, in a, kind of in his own head. Like, um, he was perfect for that part. I believe he, he nailed it. He's just a good actor anyway. Oh, fuck. The bad guy. There's a bunch of bad guys in this movie, but the main bad guy in this movie, he was good. He made you kind of almost feel sorry for him at the end when he was explaining his side of the story. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, no, no. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I hear you, dude, but you still, you, we're going to have your head regardless. <laughs> but yeah, he, he was good. A lot of the acting was good. Most of the acting was really good. It was the writing that failed this movie, and it was the directing that failed this movie. Um, and some of the, I don't know, the, I didn't understand the girl who the movie was about, her dad, the guy who they picked to play her father, who, he was Jeremy Renner's friend, both of their daughters who were now dead, murdered by guys, um, they were like friends. Jeremy Renner and this Indian guy, this Native American guy, and I didn't, that dude, I did not care for his, him in that part at all, like, every time he was on the screen, he was like, like, he looked like he was trying not to laugh, and I'm like, what is this dude's deal, like, he looked like he should be in comedies, he just has, like, a funny laugh face, and there are no laughs in this movie, he was the wrong choice for that part, I don't know, whatever, anyway, like I said, I'm not going to shit on the movie, I would say, you should watch the movie to know the story, and to know what happened, and what happens in this place, and, and, and you should know that it's a real thing that's going on, and it's an important movie, I believe, it's very important, this is strong as hell, I would say this is probably... 12%. I am so buzzing right now off of this two-thirds of a beer. Super strong. Way stronger than 10.5%. But you don't feel it. Like it's not burning the inside of my mouth. Like, like some of those really, really high alcohol beers. It's 
delicious. This is fantastic. I like this a lot. You should watch Wind River. Even if you don't go and pay for it from the Red Box or pay for it on, uh, on demand or whatever. Watch it when it comes on cable. Watch it when it comes on regular TV. Watch it when it comes on Netflix or Hulu or whatever. It's worth watching. I believe it's an important movie. It's awesome. What's really these guys' names again? Matt, Chris, and Glenn. These guys know beer. I'll tell you that. Damn it. This is so fucking good. <laughs> oh, my kid didn't hear me say that. Anyway. Hey, thanks for checking me out. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Please help me grow the channel by sharing the video or any of the videos of mine that you might happen to like and telling your friends to subscribe to the show, to the channel. Go and get yourself a four pack of these if you can find it wherever it is that you live. It is phenomenally good. This is great. Uh, hit the like button for me. Make sure you hit that bell button because that's how you know every time that I put out a new video. Get your Christmas shopping done early. That way you can chill out and enjoy some more beer and watch movies on Netflix like Wind River. Look up Elizabeth Olsen naked in the movie Old Boy and see if I'm telling the truth that she looks great naked. <laughs> and uh, have yourself a holly jolly Christmas. Until next time. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> I said I was going to finish this before the video was over. This is fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>